The writing is on the wall that cow-calf producers and feedlots should see improved market leverage over the next year, but when exactly is the tide going to turn? Hi everybody, Coulter Brown here from the Northern Ag Network. Thanks for joining us for this month's Livestock Market Report. I don't know that we can actually answer that question about when producers will finally see significant improvement in the cattle market, but today we're going to try to provide some insight on the major market drivers. We're going to look at continued contraction in the beef cow herd and what that means for the longer term outlook. We'll also talk about the drivers in the fed cattle market that will affect much of what happens for the cattle complex this summer. And we'll wrap up with an outlook on the calf market with the summer video sale season soon to kick off. Starting out though, I want to thank the sponsors of our report. Thank you to Ag Risk Advisors for their support. If you're headed to any mid-year livestock events, make sure to link up with Ag Risk Advisors there. I know Tate Berlier is always willing to educate folks on how livestock risk protection can help their operation. For over 88 years, the knowledgeable lenders at Montana Livestock Ag Credit have come to your place and offered solutions to fit your needs. Specializing in operating loans and fixed rate real estate loans with terms out to 30 years, give them a call for current rates. In years like this one, it can be challenging to know what the right financial decisions are. Look to the ag experts at Ide Bailey for help with tax planning, estate planning, drought disaster deferral options, and loss carryovers. Find your local expert at IdeBailey.com. And thank you to the Wyoming Beef Council for their support, and thank you for continuing to build demand for beef. Well, thankfully, May finally did bring some moisture for many areas across the region. Not near enough and not enough to say that the drought is over, but it does give us some optimism and maybe a chance to get something to grow this summer. Well, contraction in the beef cow herd has been pretty aggressive for the last several months. Beef cow slaughter is up 15% year to date, reflecting the impacts of the drought and high feed costs. The fast pace of slaughter implies the likelihood of steeper cow herd liquidation this year. The current pace suggests the steepest culling rate since 1986. Now it's going to be difficult to maintain that pace. Hopefully those numbers back off and if conditions improve, we could see producers start to buy back in this year. Even so, Oklahoma State Livestock Economist Dr. Darrell Peel says he's projecting to see the cow herd shrink by an additional 3.5% this year, down near 29 million head. About the only, only silver lining is the coal cow prices have held in pretty well this spring. Maybe a slight dip lower in May, but really those prices have, have held in well and are projected to stay steady through the summer before finding their typical seasonal decline as they normally do in the fall. The cow-calf pear market has been pretty strong here thanks to the April snow showers and rains in May. Areas in eastern Montana and the western Dakotas have seen improved conditions, so we've seen producers buying pears. Some of those first calf heifers and younger pears selling for $2,500 a head. From a supply standpoint, it looks like this cattle market has a lot of potential to heat up in the second half of 2022 and into 2023. When you look at three consecutive years of smaller calf crops, and of course the effect the drought has had on beef cow herd liquidation, we're going to continue to see that supply shrink going forward. On the demand side, exports are still on a record pace and domestic demand has been pretty strong, especially considering the pressure from inflation. One of the keys is the fed cow supply. Finally getting those numbers to turn lower will improve leverage for producers pretty well across the supply chain. In the May cattle on feed report though, the total inventory in feed yards came in record large for the month of May, up 2% from a year ago. Placements did fall 1% below 2021 levels, but they were expected to be 3 to 4% lower, so again another bearish report. What is causing those placements to be so high? Well, the answer is fairly easy there. It's drought. If you go back to last fall, we've seen pretty aggressive placements of, of calves and feeders into those feed yards. There just hasn't been the forage or the feed or the feed that we could get cost too darn much. So put wheels under those calves, send them to the feed yard and wish them the best of luck. Cattlefax says there are 800,000 fewer feeders outside of feed yards, so we can't keep placing cattle this aggressively forever. Some of the factors that may have impacted the market this spring is things like drought in the southern plains where producers are pulling cattle off of wheat pasture early. And last fall, a lot of producers did keep replacement heifers back on the hope that conditions would improve. Conditions have been slow to improve at best, and so a lot of those heifers have entered the feeder supply chain. So what we're effectively doing here is we're pulling cattle out of the fourth quarter of the year, and now we're going to process and market them in the third quarter. 
Add in the cost of gain that we're seeing in feed yards, estimated at $1.30 or higher, and that's going to encourage feedlots to market cattle faster, not feed them as long, continually pulling them forward. So what we're likely to see here in June is the front end fed cattle supplies start to swell, and those abundant supplies are going to put a lid on market prices, and they, those prices will improve when the supplies get more manageable, but that's likely later summer or early fall when we finally get to that point. One of the keys is going to be the processing pace. Hopefully packers won't back off on it. Compared to last year, the fed cattle packing plant utilization, it was 69%, now it's up to 92%. So if we can keep that pace going, it's gonna be very beneficial because the supply of feeders coming in behind those fed cattle is considerably less, and that is going to be key to turning the leverage over to feed yards and cow-calf producers. Now looking at the calf market here, prices so far this year have averaged $25 a hundredweight above last year. Of course, that's been overshadowed by the drought and high feed costs we've talked about and the global uncertainty caused by the war in Ukraine. However, we are going to get our first test of that fall delivered calf market when the summer video sale season starts in June. In eight out of the last 10 years, the summer videos have bested the fall calf market. That's because we see the big run of calves in the fall and that usually pressures that market. The average premium for the video sales is $67 a head. Now, Cattle Facts says that this year is shaping up similar to 2013 and 14. You remember how strong the calf market was those years. We're seeing significant premiums in the deferred live and feeder cattle futures to the tune of about $20 a hundredweight. So it's difficult to say what this market is going to do. Producers are, are wondering, should we get on the video early, hit a later sale, sell them in the fall, lay them off on the board, LRP options. There are a lot of choices here, and I can't really say any of them are wrong. We're trying to manage the upside price potential that's there with just good price risk management to make sure we survive the year. I know there's a lot of uncertainty, but the long-term fundamentals of this industry are very supportive and bullish. We just got to get to that point, and it'll certainly look a lot better if the rains keep coming too. That's going to do it for this month's Livestock Report. Thanks so much for joining us. Find more market information on northernag.net. Take care.